those who can't couldn't join. I know it's a late time in Asia. <clears throat> yeah. Does it work? Yeah, yeah, okay. we see it. Yeah. Okay. Maybe let's uh, let's take maybe two more minutes to start uh, for those who join, uh, you know, on the spot, and we can uh, we can go ahead and start. <laughs> Okay, so let's start. Uh, we have uh, Niklas Janssen, Janssen from uh, Sweden. He uh, will give us some overview about NECO and the application and the uh, task. Uh, Niklas, go ahead. Thank you. So let me see. Let's get the screen sharing up again. Yeah. Okay, very good. Yes, so uh, I said I'm going to present uh, the task around NECO, uh, our spectra element solver. But before that, a bit uh, background of me. I said I'm, I'm Niklas, I work at KTH in Stockholm, Sweden. So I'm a researcher there at the HPC Center uh, that we have, and I'm mainly working on developing numerical methods uh, that are sort of driven by destructive hardware and programming models. And that's sort of given because my background is in both computer science and numerical analysis as well. And uh, throughout my, my career, I, I've been involved in several of the big uh, HPC codes in Europe, uh, but also I was one of the main developers of, of uh, Cube at, at Riken that was running on K-Computer back in the days. And now uh, the main focus is on this new uh, code, NECO, that is going to be used uh, in this uh, competition. So uh, motivation and get uh, on the page where, what NECO is doing. So we are uh, working with in the field of computation fluid dynamics. And uh, why fluid dynamics is interesting is, I mean, a lot of interesting things, but one is uh, from an environmental or societal point of view, a lot of energy is spent using overcoming turbulent friction. And this is often how you motivate why you should invest in, in bigger and better machines, uh, because CFD is one of uh, the few fields where you actually can add just more and more grid points and you will never get uh, the good answer, or at least we can get more and more science out of it. That's why CFT is one of the areas which has a clear need and great potential to, uh, to reach exascale as well. And something to keep in mind, I will keep the exascale thing in, in mind, but something that's very important, especially when we go to uh, our philosophy with NECO here, is that you can look at exascale in two different ways. Otherwise, you look at that you're going to create a very unreasonable large problem, run it at very large scale. It's going to take a long, long time. Or well, the other one is a bit more, uh, instead of in inflating, artificially inflating the problems, uh, you are writing very fast numerics and improve the efficiency of the current methods. You can take today's problem and scale it out to more and more nodes. Uh, and to illustrate this, I mean, when I when I used to work at Rika and we ran on K-Computer, that was a 10 petaflop machine in a big room 50 meters across. That's the big red machine up in the right. Now we have exactly that uh, power in half a cabinet of our uh, Cray at KTH. Uh, so that, of course, that's a very naive flop to flop comparison, but it's still valid because when we run a full car simulation on the K computer, you re need around 100 billion grid points to run efficiently. And then you might get a bit of a nightmare in terms of what kind of problem size you need. And if you do the same extrapolation to the uh, close to 400 petaflop Lumi supercomputer in, in Finland. 
Uh, and of course, the reason why this is not really valid anymore, because it really shows that if, if you go to from low order method that you use on the K computer to high order methods, uh, you get more accuracy per uh, grid point and you can better use uh, modern hardware as well. So the goal with our code is really to try to run the smallest possible problem and then scale it out uh, as big as possible, strong scaling. So one more thing going in, before we go into the code, just to keep in mind that, I mean, accelerator, you see the plot down to the right. Uh, the red line there is an AMD CPU. You're getting around one teraflop for the different problem sizes for this benchmark. Uh, and the green line there is an NVIDIA A100. And the problem here we see that the NVIDIA A100 or GPUs in general are getting better and better performance if you have bigger problem sizes. So accelerators are very happy with a lot of data, but that sort of goes against uh, our our idea here of scaling out uh, uh, current problems to bigger and bigger machines. So we really want to be in the left corner instead of the right corner here, and that, that's sort of the challenge that we are trying to address with, with NECO as well. Uh, a bit about the method, we should not go into the math. Uh, it's a bit too late in the afternoon for that, but uh, basically what we're doing is called some called spectral elements. So we are taking our, our uh, domain and discretizing into these uh, red boxes here. And then each of these boxes has a lot of uh, grid points uh, that are distributed in a certain way. They tends to be that they're clustered towards the edge of the elements as well. So it's not uniformly clustered. But the reason why we do this is because then we can uh, uh, express a lot of operations as a set of tensor products. Uh, of course, that means it's very fast on, on modern hardware, but also on, on CPUs as well. Uh, and if you if you have uh, done any numerics courses before, uh, this will actually this method doesn't uh, mean that you will assemble a matrix. So everything was called matrix three. So basically, we are just computing each of these elements, these red boxes, individually. Uh, and then we have a communication step, which is called the gather scatter. So basically nearest neighbor communication of at the bottom here, we see the red points that we need to communicate between the different elements to make sure that our solution is uh, continuous between different elements. Because otherwise, for example, you couldn't get a nice flow structure going be between different elements like that. Uh, so what you have to make fast to run a spectral element simulation is that you need to have these tensor products very fast. And then you need to do this uh, communication very fast, what is often referred to as scatter scatter. So this is then our creation of, of NECO. So it is portable spectral element framework. Uh, it's used what, what we just discussed. It's called high order spectral element flow solver. So it, solving what's called incompressible navy stokes. So it's if you if you think about fluids, it's incompressibility is basically when you don't have fast as a fast flow. So you cannot do a cruise of an aircraft, for example, but you might be able to do it when you are about to land, for example. Then the speed is close to being compassable. Um, so we're using this matrix formulation. So everything is built around a lot of tensor products. And then the, the communication that is scatter scatter to make that very fast between the elements. So we are coming from uh, a previous code uh, referred to as NEC 5000. It was written in 1477, and uh, we needed some getting on to accelerators and support for modern uh, hardware. So instead of trying to retrofit it in that code that we have been using a lot at KTH, we uh, did a complete rewrite in maybe a bit uh, uh, unusual, but we did it in 1478 and object oriented uh, approach there. So uh, all our uh, interesting kernels are uh, basically written as abstract interfaces with a deferred method. So for example, if you want to compute, so these red pinkish boxes there in the middle, uh, these are then uh, these uh, abstract classes, basically. Think of it that as abstract or virtually in C++. So uh, the red box here for AX, so A times X, uh, when you write a solver, the solver will always call the virtual one, but then when NECO has been started up, it will then has been instantiated to one of these green boxes that will be either a GPU a vector card or, or a CPU. So since everything is operating on these virtual classes, we can support a lot of uh, hardware backends, everything from CPUs, uh, GPUs, down to some exotic uh, vector processors like SX Aurora, and also uh, FPGA, so feed pro programmable gate arrays as well. Um, so we should not go too much into details, but I will have one slide. So if someone is interested, 
the way we are actually uh, interfacing with accelerators are not via uh, traditionally abstraction layers in Fortran, so like OpenMP, OpenACC. We have our own abstraction layers that are going directly down to the native implementation, be it in CUDA, HIP, or uh, OpenCL. So we take a look at the figure down uh, to the right. Uh, that one uh, is showing the performance of, of, of actually the Taylor Green Vortex case, the same case that we will be running here uh, in the in the competition. And a lot of different machines in Europe. I don't expect you to to know this or either uh, be able to read it. But I can add some keys here, and then we see that uh, we have some CPU machines to the right. We have a vector machine in the middle, and then we have some GPU clusters uh, to the left as well. We should not think about too much performance here, but the interesting here from an end user is that all these are driven by one Fortran file. So the end user has to just compile one Fortran file describing the Telegram Vortex case, and then Echo automatically will just then target the backend it has been uh, configured uh, to run on. Uh, so of course that's very good for uh, the end users, but it's a bit of a nightmare for us developers. So it has morphed into uh, an exercise in good uh, software engineering practices as well. So we're using a lot of modern software engineering uh, methodologies with a lot of unit testing, verification, validation. It also uh, uh, deployment via methods like uh, SPAC, for example. So you can easily install Neko on most of the big machines that have SPAC by just typing SPAC install Neko and that wine liner will give you uh, a good installation of Neko on that machine for your current backend. Everything is open on GitHub and we also have a, we are quite happy with our uh, um, website's address that we actually managed to get Neko.cfd. So it's easy to remember that one as well. So uh, before we go into what, what, uh, what the code is used for, uh, let's have a look, a quick look at this abstraction layer if uh, someone is interested in technical details here. So as I briefly said, we are not using OpenMP, we're not using OpenACC. We tried it, we couldn't really get the performance out of it. So we are basically re-implementing the entire CUDA HIP API, or at least the methods we use, for example, uh, HIP malloc or CUDA malloc. Then we're just having these interfaces down to C that we can directly call into the, the native libraries. And then we, inside our code, we have a lot of uh, C pointers in Fortran then that will then be pointing to possible allocation on the device, uh, device for the device memory as well. Uh, and then we have a lot of different layers just to go down to calling the various uh, functions on, on the card as well to, uh, to launch the, the kernels. So a, a word of advice, if someone wants to dig into this during the competition, it's very good to try to read the code and maybe go to the homepage and read some of the documentation. There is documentation on, on uh, the accelerator backend as well, because one needs to take a bit of a steps to get down to the actual CUDA code, for example, if one wants to modify that, or even just modify the use case to use, uh, to use um, the device as well. So for example, if I want to do a blast operation, there are actually wrappers in the Fortran side to just do that from the Fortran side. You don't have to write a lot of CUDA code for doing that and plug that into Neko. So what are we using this code for? So it's be used in what's called uh, D, uh, DNS, so direct uh, numerical simulation. So it's very uh, detailed, unfiltered simulation of, uh, of uh, turbulence. So it's very expensive to do. Uh, one application, for example, is um, uh, this what's called a flattened rotor. So it's a big cylinder on a ship, and the cylinder is then rotating and will be acting as a wind sail, uh, reducing the energy consumption of the ship going through the water. Uh, and this, uh, for the scientists, we have uh, running different rotation speeds, alpha here, and it gives pretty good experience in uh, comparison with uh, wind tunnel measurements. But the interesting thing for, for, for me as a developer, for example, this was the watershed simulation that we did with the code. So we were using CPUs up until then. We had to wait more than two weeks to get this run through, even more if factor in the queue time. But once we had a GPU version running, uh, we could get the same uh, time to solution was reduced to, to, within two days or even less because the queue were quite empty because people were not ready with the code at that time to run on accelerators. Uh, another thing, very recent, a large-scale simulation. 
uh, is what's called uh, Rayleigh Bernard convection, so it's thermal convection. Uh, we will not get too much into detail here, but basically what you, it's related to ship cooling or the convection inside the Earth uh, mantles and also the sun as well there. But the interesting thing here is that uh, you have some outstanding uh, question. It's called if there is an ultimate regime or not. Um, the thing is that this will only happen what is called at very high Rayleigh numbers. And the problem is that you cannot really do experiments at that really high Rayleigh numbers. So you need to do simulations. And the simulations are basically that you take a long cylinder, you uh, heat it at the bottom and you cool it at the top, and then you start to get convections going up and down in that cylinder. And to try to uh, prove or disprove this ultimate regime, you need to uh, have very fine meshes. Uh, and you need good numerics, which uh, NECO provides with high order methods and spectral elements. Uh, the problem is then also that you will produce a lot of data. So that's uh, something that you don't have to, unfortunately, or maybe luckily, you don't have to deal with that uh, in the competition uh, to have all this data. Uh, and also you need to run, uh, run for a very, very long uh, time here. And that will, of course, be uh, very uh, Bad if you want to need to run on 50% or half of the biggest machine in the world and you want to run for one or two months to get the data out, then people might be unhappy. Uh, but of course, it needs an efficient implementation of modern hardware. So it goes back to my first slide that we really want to scale out a large problem on even larger machines. So NECO itself here has actually then as to motivate people to, to try this out and get good performance during the competition. It has been shown to run close to near perfect parallel uh, efficiency on 80% of the Lumi supercomputer, which is now number five in top 400. Uh, and also up to half of, of Leonardo. And the reason why it was half, because the machine was basically just powered on at that time, so we couldn't get more than half of that machine. But the trend is the same. It's perfect, what's called strong scaling. So the problem size here is the same, and then we just add more and more uh, GPUs uh, there as well. So uh, before we go into the, the task itself, uh, so the future plans for NECO, if people are interested to contribute, what really gave us this good performance here was that we started to really tune our usage of GPUs. So we added a lot of multi-threading and also a lot of different streams on the GPU. So basically, so the figure at the bottom here is a uh, trace. So basically we had a very poor GPU utilization in one part of the code. And then we managed then to run everything concurrently on the GPU. So basically to overlap two different regions and then we get perfect utilization of the GPU. And that was gave us that good uh, scaling. However, MPI, communication, even if you do communication from the GPU memory, it will still create a stall due to that the CPU or the host has to initiate this communication. So the future plans, which we're now working a lot with and people are more than welcome to contribute, it's a full open project. It's not part of the competition, but I'm just saying it out here, is that we now work on decoupling the communication from the host to do GPU initiate communication with a lot of interesting technologies like EnvishMem or StreamAware MPI, for example. Good. So that's everything I wanted to say and sort of uh, advertise about NECO. So we should talk then about uh, the task itself. So for the student class competition, the task is to solve the Taylor Green vortex problem with NECO on both CPU and uh, GPU nodes on the cluster. Uh, and uh, measure the time per time step and also to compute entropy. So the time to per time step is sort of the figure of merit. And the entropy is used for verification and validation to make sure that no one has been cheating here in their tuning so that everything is fine with it. And you should also instrument NECO with an MPI profiler and report the three most used MPI calls during a run. Uh, and the last one is that you should create a short visualization video using a tool called Paraview. Uh, and I should say, um, so the figure to the right there, that's Taylor Green Vortex, it's at a slight higher computational cost, higher valence number than you're going to run in this experiment. But you will get sort of the same dynamics uh, in this case here. But uh, you might have to uh, increase uh, the simulation time to run it longer to get some more of the interesting features. 
uh, in the case file. But that's the case that, uh, as it is set up, it will run, but you just need to wait a bit more and generate more data. So in the end, you should be able to create some animation. This is, of course, far beyond what the time is in your file. But if you run it long enough, you'll get these interesting dynamics that you start with the initial condition that then later breaks down into turbulence and these are rotating in a very interesting pattern as well. Yes, so what is supposed to be uh, handed in uh, is for both the CPUs and the GPU runs, you submit uh, the log file, so standard out, that contains both the time per time step and the entropy calculation. So you don't have to implement either of those. Everything is printed out in log file. Uh, and then also for both CPUs and GPU runs, submit uh, two solution snapshots from the run. And that means uh, both these field zero, the F files, but also the uh, metadata file uh, that's called uh, NEC 5000. We need actually three files, but two of these snapshots that should be uploaded to the to the drive uh, according to the instruction on the on, on the on the um, on the wiki there as well. So it's not much to uh, submit, but it might take some time to run this, especially if you want to have a nice uh, animation uh, there as well. So I think that was basically the last slide I had prepared, but before we can take questions, I was actually thinking if I just want to highlight something on the on the Wiki page that might be interesting. Let's see if I have it here. I should have it prepared. Yes. So if I get my screen back, yes. So uh, some things to remember when you need to run this. Uh, when you configure it, it's very simple. You just configure and put it a path, and this path you need to know in order to know where to run uh, commands later on down there. So if you have followed this instruction, it should be fine. But what can bite you in the end is when you have to compile the GPU version. So if you click on this link, you will get to the main repository of Neko, and then you have a, a quite detailed instruction on how this should be done. Um, and if you follow this, you should be able to get a binary working on GPUs. But it's very important to remember that uh, you can only build Neko for either CPU or GPU. So when you do two different builds, it's it's highly recommended to do that in two different source trees and two different prefixes when you install it, because you might be able you might end up in a situation when uh, Neko thinks that it it's going to use GPUs by because you have and also you configure it for CPUs as well because there are some leftover files. So just uh, keep that uh, in mind. Yes, so that's basically it. So I'm happy to take any questions if there are any. Okay, thank, thank you, Niklas. Um, and thank you everyone for watching and for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, just uh, you know, unmute yourself or just write in the comments. Uh, I will add that we will send you later the OneDrive uh, team folder uh, per team, so you can upload the results there. Um, you, all, you should all know that we have the Slack channel. Any questions? Uh, I also created the channel per application, so you'll see four new channels. So if you want to ask dedicated questions, uh, related to Neko or to any other applications, you can use the channel, you can use the team folder, the team channel, or the main channel. Depends on you. It's up to you. Um, I would say don't don't stack, don't hesitate. If you have any issues, you know, don't stay like in the air. You know, contact us and we'll you know we'll try to help you solve it. Um, please use up to four uh, CPU nodes on the PSA cluster and up to four GPUs on the PSA cluster. And the reason is that we don't want to burn all the compute resources that we got, and we try to limit that to uh, you know reasonable amount. We have 21 teams, so that's a lot of a lot of computation going on. And we don't want to you know burn our relationship with them. So um, let's use that. For the you know for the visualization you can run longer, but for the you know for the just to if you want to create something nicer. But for the actual results, run it on the, you use the actual input that was given. Um, 
again, if you have any questions, feel free. I know it was a lot and most of you just started, so you might get questions as you as you try it. Um, and uh, um, that, I think that's it on my side. I have I have one question on my side. Let me let me ask you. And I see no one is asking. I'll start with something. And I know Neko is is based on NEC 500, right? And uh, 5000. Sorry, NEC 5000. And another application, or is it uh, or only it's, that? It's we use NEC 5000 a lot at KTH, but we needed a strategy for GPUs, mm -hmm. and we tried with OpenACC on NEC 5000, but. If we're not really happy with the performance. So mm -hmm. this was you sort start of a, fresh. You start fresh with the it started Neko? fresh. It was a undercover movement at KTH. <laughs> undercover. And then, yes, undercover. <laughs> it was basically we had two tracks and uh, the open SC track didn't succeed. Okay. And you you try you, you those two NEC five thousand still running and in parallel to Neko? So the NEC 5000 people uh, in the US Exascale project, they have yeah. sw switched over to NEC RS, which is a sort of the mm -hmm. competitor, NEC so to say, but we should, not, we should be friends, but, but a friendly yeah. competition. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Again, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. Uh, we'll wait maybe a few more, uh, few more seconds, minute. If no questions, um, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so I noticed that in the file, the input given, there are three case files. So which one to use to submit the result? So, so uh, uh, we change. We gave another input. We there were two input at some point, and we changed that to. Uh, you will see the TGV. Uh, let me see. I, I, I see there's a that, that case like three case files, TGV the, and yeah in the, in the in the zip file. In the in the same file TGV.zip. What do you see? In the TGV.zip, I I saw I see uh yeah so the TGV the re, the case. Uh, a re sixteen hundred right? Yeah, yes. that's a sixteen hundred and three hundred and sixty. Yeah, so, so the sixteen hundred is the use? is the input. The three sixty is a smaller case for you to play around. Oh, I okay. can we can we can add that. Uh, I think I think it. I thought we added that, but uh, let's see again. So so the real input is sixteen hundred, right? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's at uh, yeah the sixteen hundred. The sixteen hundred okay. is the actual input, and the smaller one is just um, you know for for you to play around with the. Uh, uh, if you want to start with a smaller case, I, I will add that comment. Okay. Okay. So, thank you so much. No, so it's, on, to... it's on already in the wiki. We already specify the input, which is the input to use. Wasn't that the, that clear? Well, it's in the wiki, then... but it's uh, on point number one. It just you just see the TGV. You don't. We need to mention that it's. No, the... no, no. The, on the on the command line, we specify the which is the exact input name. So. It's there, okay? Yeah, you can see it on the example, on the example, on the MPI run example that David David put, David Chow. Uh, oh, I, I will see. add that also to the task and submission just to be more clear. So no, no, uh, you know, no issues, no problem. Okay. So I, I yeah. can add something on, on the smaller one, the, I said the 360 case there, that's just, 500 elements uh, and that you can basically run on your laptop without a problem to try out the application okay thank you so much oh there's a question in the chat uh, can we do some code modifications to improve GPU performance? Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> You're welcome to do that. Uh, that 
that would mean that you need to dig into the big uh, NECO code base because the, the small uh, TGV.f90 file that you that are provided that describe the case will not be any of the compute bounds part. So you really need to dig deep into the, the code. And since this is NVIDIA machines, sure. you will find a lot of CUDA code deep down. I, I will add that if you do if you do uh, eventually do code modification, you need to let us know what you did to make sure you didn't change the physics or you know something weird that uh, um, uh, you know would change the the solver, I would say, or the input or something like that. So um, feel free to consult with us, but uh, I would say submit the regular result and submit the result with the code changes. And you can also present it in the team interview. We'll have a team interview in, um, in the, at the end of the position. So you can show your results. Uh, but uh, for the code, for code, possible code changes, um, um, you know, just uh, consult with us. Uh, you can consult all your team and what are, what are you planning to do and just make sure that it's not changing the you know the solver in a way or changing the way the physics works that's a good it's a good point any additional questions anyone wants to raise don't don't be afraid yeah i uh, uh just uh, off on test test can you hear me yeah yep. Yeah, okay, so I ran the code partially uh, before and it failed with the error message that the uh, uh, that the dummy user defined initial condition set and I uh, and I looked into it and it wants to have a specific initial condition which isn't set but the experiment expects it to be set. Uh, what is the problem exactly there? Yes, so that, that's a good question. So I didn't add a slide about that, but basically when you build Neko, it will create and install a a, a uh, solver called Neko inside uh, the prefix. And that is used only for if you have a case that can be just described by the case file. But since we, in this Taylor Green Vortex case, uh, we are now having a Fortran file. And then as the instruction says, one should use a tool called make Neko that will basically take the Fortran file describing the case because we are computing certain things inside there that is not in the main Neko. And then if we link it with the lib Neko and then create a, unfortunately called the same, it's called Neko, but it will then add and plug in this uh, user provided uh, functions so that instead of these dummy functions, which are there just to pr produce this error if one tries to run the standalone Neko with a user uh, case as well. So if you get that one, uh, I suggest go for the wiki and, and see that there is a command for the make Neko test.f90, uh, so the, the tgv.f90, and then you will create a Neko file that is in the same folder, and that's the one that, that should be run. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so if you have future questions, uh, don't hesitate. Again, use the Slack, contact us, any method. I will try to help you. I would like to take Niklas. Thank Niklas. Thank you. And uh, safe travels. I know he's <laughs> traveling all over. And uh, good luck to all the teams. And uh, I'll, I'll send the, the recordings later for those who couldn't join. And uh, um, We'll continue via the Slack uh, for any additional uh, announcements and questions. Okay. Okay, so thank you all and uh, bye bye.